Hello my friends, my name is Dragonheart the Prince of Wales and welcome to a beginner's tutorial guide for Total War Saga Thrones of Britannia. Now before we begin, a quick caveat here, there will be a timestamp on the screen, this will get you straight into the tutorial, but for the first couple of minutes of this video I will be talking about a few key things about my channel and about this tutorial video in general, so if you want to skip all of that, you can go straight to that timestamp that has been shown. Now first of all, I've done many tutorial videos on my channel in the past for various Total War games that include Total War Warhammer, Shogun 2 and many others. You'll see them on the screen right now. If you're somebody that thinks you might be interested in those games and tutorial guide for those games, then by all means check out the links in the description below to those playlists. Now secondly, I also want to bring your attention to this video and the fact that it's a beginner's guide. So if you're somebody that's played Total War uh, campaigns in the past, you've done some dabbling around with multiplayers, you've done some of your own campaigns, you're a bit more experienced than perhaps your beginner, you know, your beginner's kind of player, you've played 50 hours plus probably, or you've played other Total War games, and you're, you're probably not going to enjoy this video or find it as helpful, so I'd recommend checking out somebody else's video, but if you're somebody that's brand new to Total War, then this video might be the guide for you. So first of all, we're going to start off with the menu screen by here. This has campaign, battles, options, DLC, and obviously to quit the game. We'll start off with campaign. So you click on it and you can continue a campaign if you have a save. We've got a new campaign, a load campaign, and a multiplayer. We'll go over those options in a moment. You have battles, custom battle. I'd recommend playing around with custom battle a little bit to get used to some of the unit builds as well. That's a very good thing to do to start off with. Multiplayer battle if you've got a friend you want to play with. Quick battle if you just want to jump in and have a battle straight away. And you've got leaderboards and replays. Now options, you have your graphics, your brightness and gamma, your controls, your game settings, your sound and credits. This is pretty much universal for all Total War games. We'll start off with graphics. So I'm playing on um, a mixture of high and ultra. I have a GTX 970 to give you an idea. If you're trying to work out to try and build a PC to play this, if you can play Total War Tiller, which was released a couple of years before this game, then you're pretty much fine to play this game. There's not too much difference as it's using the same game engine as Total War Tiller. But these are the options I have here, so you can customize them, you can change your resolution, you can run it in a window mode if you want to, you can change your UI scale, I have it 100%, and stuff like grass, trees, terrain. What I'd recommend, if it's lagging a little bit, bring some of these down, maybe try it on medium and work your way up, or, or do that sort of thing, and also run your benchmark as well. To sort of check things out but everything you need is on here and this is pretty much universal now for all of the modern total war games we come out of that dlc i imagine they will be releasing dlc in the future so that will obviously have a blue option there and we'll show you what dlc you can get so we're going to go with campaigns i'm going to show you how to do a campaign and we're going to go over the basics of the campaign and also some battles as well so we're going to start with a new campaign here now this is what you're greeted with so you've got english kingdoms Welsh Kingdoms, Gaelic, Great Viking Army, and Viking Sea King. So with the English Kingdoms, you have Mercia and Wessex. So this is Mercia. Good order. And I got their faction leader and a portrait. And then it gives you a sort of breakdown of their kingdom and tells you some basic information about that uh, nation. And also if you go to Wessex, Wessex is a much bigger kingdom. It owns a lot more. It has part of South Wales and all of South England pretty much. And it gives you the initial challenge, which is easy and the fact it's a large territory as well. Welsh Kingdoms, so you've got Stratclut we are Arthur's folk. in True the north, and then you've got the Kingdom of Gwynedd in the True north by here. Gaelic Kingdoms, For the glory of the you've got these guys in the north, and you've also got Mead over an island, and then Great Viking Army, East Anglia, and Northumbria in the middle. And then at the very end you've got Dublin, which own both the Isle of Man and Dublin, and then you have Tundraya, which has right at the northern tip of Scotland. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to go with the nation I'm familiar with, and that is the Kingdom of Gwynedd. The the most country. of these nations, most of the core uh, game mechanics play very similarly. There's a few slight differences. If you want me to do a breakdown video of the differences with these factions in a follow-up video to this tutorial, then let me know in the comments section below. But we're going to play as the Kingdom of Gwynedd for this tutorial video. Now, this leader by here, I have a video on him, a three minute history video, which is an a, a short animation video I did. His name is Anoraut or Anoraut. There's two ways of spelling his name. And yeah, that'll be linked on the screen up here somewhere or should have been. So we can go and check that video if you want to. So campaign, we're gonna play on hard and hard for the purpose of this 
as it's given me an initial challenge of hard. What I'd recommend though is if you're brand new, perhaps do it as normal. No shame in giving an easy campaign to get used to the mechanics and stuff, but you know, I'm just gonna go on hard come familiar with the game, but I would recommend normal if you are somebody who um, is brand new. The information tells you the start year, 878 AD. Initial challenge is hard and to secure the homeland is basically what we're trying to do here. It tells you a breakdown of what's going on with the faction, like an introduction to him and to his people. The Welsh Kingdoms tells you what they have. So they have um, plus five unit morale in their own region, for example. They have heroism, that's like the trait there. So like I said, there's a few differences with the Kingdom of Gwyneth, it's heroism. So every time you earn heroism, heroism you can uh, rank up things and get bonuses like public order, food, that sort of thing. And then faction features, so Gwyneth have different things here. So for example, increased bonuses from followers, they have very strong spear and good missile infantry with exceptional archers. It tells you then camping settings in the bottom left. If you click on this, advise the help of the none. Show AI player moves and go limited, all or full, up to you. I think limited is fine to start off with. If you want to autosave to cloud, you can. If you want battle realism mode, so that will, uh, it tells you over here, when enabled, you'll have to fight battles without the radar map or tool tips. So that's basically what that does there. If you want a battle time limit, you can have that. I have it at 60, I think that's perfectly fine. And then obviously you have your victory conditions then as well, victory objectives. So there's multiple objectives for this faction here. Short conquest victory, so control 40 settlements. A short fame victory, so you get a fame victory by achieving that. A short kingdom victory, so this would be obviously getting all of Wales. So Gwyneth, Powys, Kenedig, Yon, Glamorgan and uh, David. So that's what that is by there. If you want to go for a long campaign victory or long kingdom victory, then there's a lot more you have to get as well. Then you have to go to sort of London and Cumbria and that sort of thing. And ultimate victory then is to complete any of the long victory types. Then eliminate the Viking invasion fleet. So there's quite a lot of different things going on here. So once you're happy and you familiarize yourself with the nation, start a campaign by clicking the button here. And it loads up nicely. It tells you a breakdown of them again on this screen by here. So we've got a nice little overview of the entire Isle of Great Britain and Ireland. And it, obviously the different colours signify which factions which. So red for Wessex, white for Gwynedd, blue for Mercia. They're all like the southern ones. And you've got East Anglia in the blue, Northumbria in the pink, etc. So very good stuff there. Now once I click start campaign, it'll bring up a short intro video. We're not going to watch all of it, but I'll just skip through it quickly for you. So this comes on by here. Your father united Wales. And it gives you a basic but breakdown of what's going on. But we're just gonna hit escape between you and your Just to skip Thankfully, it. Thankfully, your land was spare the devastation wrought by the great army. Even so, there is no time to be lost. After building up your strength, take advantage of the disruption in England to strike while they are distracted and weakened. Prove yourself your father's greatest son and bring victory home to Wales. Your army is ready, awaiting your orders. Attack and defeat the rebel army gathered near your capital to remove the menace they pose. Okay, so there we go. So skip the intro video, and then once you actually get into the campaign, uh, your advisor in the top left-hand corner by you will give you a brief sort of overview of what's going on in the campaign to tell me to remove the rebels here. Just going to click off here now for the moment, and it's given me a mission issue um, option by here. Humble beginnings, so we should stabilize internally before we look beyond our borders, prove your right to rule, and eliminate the nearby rebels. So, eliminating the rebels in Abafra, and I actually get a reward of internal stability. So I get plus 5 public order in all my regions, and a plus 5 50% unit replenishment rate in all armies. So that's a very good thing to get early on, and if you want to find out where it is, Zoom to location, and you can see it's an Aberthrow, and it's that rebel army there. We're going to do that in this video. But first, before we do that, let me show you a few things that are going on. So from left to right, we have menu. Brings up the menu. You can also press escape to get that menu up. You've got your chat here. This is actually quite useful for multiplayer and that sort of thing. Your advisor, you can bring it up like that. And Total War Academy brings up your Steam Total War Academy sort of breakthrough thing. And if you've got a, a Total War account, you can sort of go into it and access it through this. I'm just going to press uh, Shift and Tab to get back out of that. That's what the top left does. So from left to right up to the top, then in the middle, 5,000 here. That's my income. That's how much money I currently have. I have 5,000 gold to spend. And by hovering over it and keeping the cursor on there, it breaks it down for you. So taxes plus 424. 
trade is 118. Other income I'm bringing in is, is plus 500. But then my armies cost me 280. My maintenance is 150. Other expenses is zero. So you can see that it, it, it adds up nicely for you by the modifier. So I'm bringing in 1,042 a turn. I'm losing 430 a turn. Tell me that the gold I should get next to will be 612. And as you can see in brackets, it tells you straight away the 612. And by hovering over that, it tells you the same thing. Now this by here is your food surplus. Red and orange is obviously bad. Yellow and green is good. So I have 60 units here, or minus 60 for the units. But I've got plus 50 for characters. And my buildings also produce plus 40. So supplies is plus 2 in all armies. My unit replenishment is currently plus 10%. So I got plus 30 food, which is good. The higher that goes, the, the better it's going to be. Um, when you recruit units, so for example, you, you would use um, this button by here. But I can only do it when I'm garrisoned in a settlement. When you actually recruit a unit, which I will show you in this video, they only come up as like 20 or 30 men at a depleted unit. If you've got plus, if you've got good food though, they'll replenish quicker. So that's what that basically does there. This by here, this sort of golden guy with axes, that's War Fever. Now War Fever 1, minus 70 is bad, plus 70 is good, red bad, green good. And again, there's different modifiers on here. So for example, Battles is minus 3, Border Wars minus 6, and then Peace Treaties is plus 5, and Events is plus 5 as well. So that can go up and down depending on how well you're actually doing in your campaign, what sort of technologies you've got, have certain events happened, that sort of thing. So that's what that does there. And finally, heroism. So this is specific for the Kingdom of Gwynedd and the other Welsh uh, faction of Stratclut. So heroism is currently on 8. You can go down to minus 10 and go to 100. So my settlements has given me my plus 8. So I've currently got plus 2 unit morale for all armies, plus 1 morale in all regions, and plus 2 melee skill for all units in all armies. So the more I rank up my general, the more that I raid certain events that happen, technology, battles, that sort of thing, my heroism will grow, which is really good. My leader's influence is 6, so I got plus 3 fame. And then Gwyneth then it tells you the, the, the breakdown of the faction which we had at the start of the video as well. So that's what the top bar does. Then on the right hand side you've got objectives. So again, it's telling you missions, which is what we've just seen for eliminating the rebels in Aberfro. And obviously the victory condition screen which we saw earlier as well. Next to that is economy. Click on economy and this again breaks things down for you. So you can increase my tax level or decrease it. So by decreasing it the public order is happier. But I'm not making as much money a turn. So gold next year has gone down to 294. Whereas if I bring it all the way up, I could be making 825 a turn. However, they're minus six, they're more likely to rebel. So for now, we'll just keep it as a satisfactory. Yellow's good, yellow's fine, nothing's gonna happen with the yellow. Plus two, so that's fine. And then it tells you a breakdown again of what we saw earlier. And it tells you some tax effects. At the moment, food production is zero. And the public order is actually down because of the, the tax. So something you've got to keep in mind break that up to trade to all the different factions in the game it tells you what they produce in here so for example trade partners so wessex are producing cloth pottery and lead whereas east anglia are only producing cloth and salt so mercy on the other hand though they've got quite a lot of things being produced here so mercy would be a pretty good trade partner early on they've got iron lead pottery cloth and timber and you can break this down for all different factions. You can clearly see who has the most resources. And it gives you a breakdown of all the total value of export, which is 118. And it just breaks down importing as well then. And you can clearly see on here then who is importing the most. So it breaks it down nicely there. And then it goes summary as well then. So I projected this turn. Starting treasury 5,000. We've already gone through that. And again, it just breaks it down. Trade, military, looting, diplomacy. Uh, the total income which breaks down to the 1042 and then your upkeep for your army which is a factored into it and also building maintenance is also factored into it which leaves me with 612 so that's how the the finances sort of work in total war uh, my advice is to start a campaign play around with it work out some trade things and just you know make sure you're, you're not overspending too much and that you especially for a start of a campaign like this i'd only start off with one army and not sort of go overboard once you're sort of once you've sort of established like a, a whole kind of province or two and you, and you can afford it maybe go for a second army then uh, we've got technology so technology unlocks after certain events military on this side and then civic on this side so for example go to melee units here hover over melee specialists research rates 100 percent 
This would unlock the recruitment of Warhounds. But I've got to recruit 10 swords and or axe unit infantries. Once I've done that, I can unlock this and that will give me the ability to get Warhounds. I go down that list then and get plus 6 melee skill for sword and axe infantry. All the way up to plus 50% replenishment chance to sword and axe infantry in the recruitment pool. So once I've maxed this out, I'm going to be looking pretty good. And um, it tells you then, so replacement chance of swords, levy axe infantry, and it gives you a breakdown. The same for other units as well, so cavalry. I go recruit 10 cavalry units before I can start researching technology. So you basically don't start off be able to do technology at the start. You have to unlock these by doing certain things. And that's currently what it does. And at the moment, I can't research anything, so I have to wait a few turns before I can. Next up, we got diplomacy. Click on diplomacy. By holding down the mouse... Um, Cursor, oh, sorry, the left mouse button. I can actually drag things around and I can zoom in and out with my mouse cursor, my mouse wheel. So it brings up all of Britain, all different uh, factions here. Left hand side is our faction, right hand side is the AI faction. And I can toggle this down by alphabetical order if I wanted to, A to W, by strength. So one is Wessex, we already established they are the biggest faction in the game. To start, all of this yellow is them. All of these greens are factions that are friendly towards them. Obviously, the ones that are sort of white or grey are quite neutral, and the ones that are red or pink have a bit of a disdain towards them. East Anglia, East Anglia, which is all yellow up here, is the second biggest. And again, you can see red is Wessex, so they're probably going to be at war with each other soon, you'd imagine. And if what you can do, you can actually hover over the faction. So I've selected East Anglia, I'm hovering over Wessex, and you can see a nice breakdown of why they hate each other so um past events basically past wars diplomacy the fact that they're great powers and then it gives you a modifier it's 102 and that's going to be 103 next turn just so going from hostile and it's deteriorating and northumbria and then you can go to the weakest then so over here in the south of ireland desmuna are actually the weakest faction they have two regions starting off so if you're playing as an irish faction maybe go for desmuna or Brega, that's probably a good target for Dublin early on. And it just tells you a breakdown. Brecon, for example, Brecania, they've only got one settlement. And also what's, what's worth breaking down things as well in the, in this diplomacy is the different things going on by here. So for example, vassals, none, military allies, none, defensive packs, none, and enemies, none. So if I'm playing as Gwyneth like I am in this campaign, Brecon would be a good faction to take because I'm not going to annoy anybody by taking them. However, if I was to go for... Glamorgan, for example, they're a vassal of Wessex, the same as Gwent. They're also a vassal of Wessex. So if I declare war on those early on, I could end up being at war with Wessex, being at war with all of that. So maybe don't do that until you've conquered all of Wales, that sort of thing. But early on, maybe go for Brecon. It is definitely a possibility. Even Powys. Powys actually starts off with, as your ally, though. So maybe you and Powys can go down south and maybe, perhaps take out uh, Sisolig by here because they don't actually start off at war with anybody. I think David is the same as well. They don't start off at war. So maybe go down the coast and take all of that first before turning your attention to Brecon, and then finally Powys before eventually going for the south of Wales. So that's what I can do here. And by going over the attitude, it gives you all different modifiers of why people like you, don't like you. Regions also breaks things down. So who's got the most regions? So as expected, Wessex, they have 21. When compared to summer factions, we only have like one. Treaties, so if you've got any treaties going on, we do with powers it comes up here military alliance and then obviously a green face means they like us tells you why a red face says they don't like us it also tells you why and again you can break things down this map with different things here so you can toggle geographic mode nice way of looking at it as well yellow is obviously us red don't like us green etc is quite uh, neutral look at armies so you can take armies out so you can see where people are You've got settlement filters, so you can take all the settlements in and out. Sieges, so if any sieges going on. And then the same with resource filter. If you want to go for resources, they all pop up there. You've got overviews filters, so you can take all of the all that off if I want to, where I am and where enemies are. And yeah, faction ownership, a good way of breaking it down as well. You can see where everything is there. Diplomatic status, so blue, yellow, obviously good. If I'm at war with someone, red, bad. Diplomatic attitude, again. I'm on Powys and Mercy don't like Powys. We do. Do it that way. Regions wealth. Obviously a good one to use as well. I'm gonna find out how how good a region is when it comes to the wealth of a region. And then you've got public order and finally food as well. 
So that's what the diplomacy menu has to offer. And then you have faction. This brings up your actual faction here. So faction leader by here, Anarad General. It tells you he has one estate. His influence is currently six. That's because of the base influence he has, which is five. And the estate also gives him one. And he's currently 28 years of age. He has very little fame. Obviously, you've got to achieve um, 256 for a short fame or 532 for a long fame victory. So you've got to try and get that bar up as high as you can. His influence is over half right now, which is quite good. And in faction effects from that menu at the start are all on here as well. This is his family tree. So he starts off here. And this is Gwen, his wife. And if you click on her, it brings up some stats here. She's actually strict, but because of that, she actually gives some attributes to Anderout. So command, zeal, and loyalty. And you can see that they have a couple of children here. They have Idwal, currently four years of age. And he's an heir. And then you have Meredith, who's a daughter, who is three years of age. So we could perhaps use them later in the campaign. The little silver crown shows who the heir is as well. He has a couple of brothers. He has Catel. Or as he's historically known as Cadell. And he's actually a different faction here. He's part of Sisalig. And then you've got Merwen then. Mervin, as he's also known as. And uh, if you just hover over it, it tells you uh, what he's got here. He's a king, obviously, of uh, Powys. And then he has a, a wife as well. And then you have Tudwal over here then, who's actually one of our faction. He's uh hasn't got a faction logo above him, so he's part of our family. He's the youngest brother of um, Anorath. And he has got no estates, he has got no command, he's got 5 for governance. It tells you what he's got there, plus 50% corruption and plus 15% construction cost. He's got a couple of uses, he's only 17, his influence is 5 and his loyalty is 5. Now, when loyalty goes low, what you can do, you can actually give them estates. So if you go into governor and estates by here, you can see we have the only other one at the moment, which is Gwyneth. And you can obviously remove Tudwell and give it to somebody else. Um, and then estates then... If I wanted to, I could actually click on the Estates button by here. And then that little parchment by there, that shows you an estate. And it gives you plus one loyalty. and in, well, Sorry, plus one influence. Um, I think it secures loyalty as well. So you could give that, for example, I could say, right, this is going to go to Earthwell or to Tudwell if I thought they were going low. So you can do that. And obviously, the more estates you gain, the better it's going to be. They give you influence. And other fa other family members and governors could be, be jealous. But... Uh, sort of balance things out you can give them an estate from this menu by here got your records tells you all your different military battles and stuff things that have happened tells you your leader your prosperity events that have happened you can go through a timeline by here and obviously you got your battle statistics and stuff by here as well so that's the faction menu they've got events that pop up on this menu by here your armies shows you where they are you can just click on them to go there your provinces so you can click on Gwyneth it takes you to the whole province of Gwyneth and then finally we've got factions and again it's a little bit like diplomacy they're all listed here and if they like you or hate you can be um can be going through gone through through this page by here so that's basically what that does there's a lot of provinces though so provinces Gwynedd. basically abafro is the capital the capital will always be on the left hand side then the villages within this province are on the right hand side so they are rudlan which is there they are kaisagaint which is there Duganwi, which is the Duganu, and then also again we have Duganu. So Duganu has two because the bigger one it actually has the two by here. So overall it's these four by here. Anything that's yellow is yours, anything that's white is neutral, anything that's blue is an ally, and anything that's red is an enemy. Now what you can do, you've already gone through the money here, 5,600 each turn. I can build things up if I want to. So, for example, I can build this great hall up to a royal hall. And by hovering over it, it tells you how many turns it'll take. Eight turns. How much it'll cost. 3,272. And what I get for it. So, I get a garrison of Welsh levy, axemen, spearmen, swordsmen, archers, and javelin. I get plus four happiness, but I do lose four, minus 45 food production. So, I could go for that if I wanted to. It'd take me eight turns and takes away that money at the top straight away. Now, you'll see all the building icons have gone from every other part of the slots I had in my villages that was on there previously, apart from one. I have enough money left over to build the copper veins, uh, the cop from the copper veins to the copper mines. Public order goes down by minus four, copper production goes up though, so it's going to be good for trading. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click back on this to undo this, 
I think food might be what we need early on before we expand too much. So maybe I'll go for one of these green icons. So one of these green icons signify food. And you can also go into the garrison details by clicking this button. So you can see Aberflow has got quite a big garrison already. I can also go into details. That brings up all of my details here of my provinces. So for example, obviously with Wales, they're using the historical names. But if I wanted to rename Duganu to Duganui, what is or what was what it was known as, I can perhaps go uh, Degan. I think it's only one way actually. Deganry, I think that's how you spell it. I can rename it and then are you sure? Yes. Or you can know, uh, rename it to something completely different if you want to role play a little bit. So if I wanted to say that uh, Rudland was, um, I don't know, Phoenix. I can spell it. Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix Estates, if I can spell Estates. Here we go. If I want to do something ridiculous like that, then you can. It's totally up to you. And again, it brings down how much gold each place is bringing you. These three are bringing me a little bit. Aberfrost bring me minus 150, so that's because of the maintenance. Obviously, being a capital is going to have a bit more maintenance, and I can obviously tax it. But if I don't tax it, I lose food production and I lose a bit of income, so I'm going to want to tax it. And yeah, they can remove the governor. I can look at the family tree from this as well. So quite a few different options there. I can raise a new army from my capital as well. So if I want to go for Yoreth, who we've seen previously, I can do that. It costs him nothing. He's part of my family tree, the same as Arthwale. Oh, we've got this guy over here then, uh, Nuithon. It actually cost me 400. But he does have a starting trait of unit morale when defending. And you can scroll down the list then to see you've got uh, Tudric. And then you've also got Griffith by here as well. So I think what we'll do, we'll go and get this up to a cattle herd. That'll get me more supplies and more food productions plus one estate. I'm also going to get this up to fish and jetties for more supplies as well. So that's two things I'm building. It'll take six turns each. And now I think it's time to finally show you a battle. So what you're going to do, you're going to click on the general here. By clicking on him, you can see all the yellow highlighted area shows where he can move. So if I right click, it brings up this line here. If I want to go out to the sea, I can. And you'll see when I go far out by here, there's a little skull icon that's appeared by my cursor. That shows he'll suffer attrition. Whereas if I bring him back in, in land by here, that skull icon has now gone. My if I right click on an enemy, a sword will appear. If I right click when a sword appears, I can initiate a battle. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to right click and release. And he's going to charge towards him for a battle. Now what you can do on this screen, it tells you a little bit about what's going on in the battle. So we have 588 deployed. They have 500. We have some effects going on here. So I have um, morale when general's nearby. Plus one morale when general's alive. I have the rally ability, I got plus 10% to the commander's aura, plus one command, and it's got other stuff as well. Yeah. Military force, it tells you a little bit of breakdown of my army by here. Region and province, I get plus one to local own province. The wife's abilities of what she's given me, and also finally then the stance, it's a normal stance. And with them then, it tells you who we're against, we're against Elisid, Welsh rebels. He's a general, and he's a cavalry unit as well. And I've got a couple of spears. Uh, an archer and more cavalry balance power slightly in my favor so i could auto resolve this by clicking this button and it would probably um we'd well, like to think we'd win you can display a preview of the battle map so i click on that it loads up by here the darker stuff is low ground the greener stuff is high ground so you can see there's high ground on the other side of the battlefield but there's a lot of forest on our side of the battlefield so you can keep that in mind when you're about to initiate a battle what we're going to do then we're going to click on manly fight this battle and this will be a tutorial part of the tutorial that doesn't make sense at all <laughs> this will be a part of the tutorial which will be the the fight in so i'll tell you how to initiate uh, commands and stuff in the battle what to look out for that sort of thing how to move units around also on this screen before we click start battle you've got the map here as well if you want to just look on this part of the screen and not worry about doing the preview and then it tells you how many men's in each unit. So I'm using ultra unit size, I think it is. So 48, or might be high. Large, rather. 48, 160, 160, 80, 80, 60, and then 40, and then 260s and 280s there. By hovering over them, it tells you their, their attributes, their skills, etc., all on the screen. Which is a nice feature. I quite like that. So let's click Start Battle. And then you're given the weather conditions. So do you want to wait, or do you want to start deployment? If I start deployment in rain, it will cause stuff like um, flame arrows won't be able to use them and buildings will be harder to set on fire so I think I'll wait 
Maybe see things a bit clearer. Wait again, it's still raining. And finally, we got fog. I think we'll start and play in the fog. Um, visibility is reduced, but that's fine because it does work both ways. So, straight away, you'll see I'm on the battlefield right now. Enemies in red appear. We are in yellow down by here. So, W, A, S, D moves my camera around. And then Q and E moves it left to right like that. So, that's the first thing. I use my mouse wheel to go down. I go down to grass level all the way up. Goes up as far as this. Now, what you can do, if I bring up the options by pressing escape. Um, I think it's on... It's on game settings. I can't remember if it's on game settings or if it's on... Might be on graphics. Uh, controls, sorry, I'm on controls. You can actually change your battle camera to standard camera rather than the classic Total War camera. It's up to you. You can play around with these, but for now we're just going to use the basic camera that we have for this. So let's go back to resume uh, battle. WASD. So to click, press a unit, you can click on it and you select them and click off them to deselect. Control A makes you select them all. If I got Control A and I right click, I move them about. If I hold down, I can drag left to right like this, for example, to make them wide and small. Now, if I want to put them into certain categories, I can hold down Control. For example, if I want to put the two cavalry together, the general and the scout horseman, I'll left click on general, and while holding down Control, I'll click the horse as well, the other. Uh, cavalry, the scout horseman. I've got two of them selected. Now what I can do, I can put them separately and right click, for example, like that. If I do control G, I put them into a lock formation. If I just press G, it's not a lock. So G, I can press one, for example. If I click off and press one, I can just select a group like that and I can move them about. But if it's control G, then it'll always be locked and I can't actually move them when I right click like that. So I'm just gonna have them locked. And on the left hand side, the day for this battle, I think. What I'm going to do, we're going to get my two spears. And I'm going to put them out at front. I think they're going to be locked as well. And my two archers are going to be providing me some support behind. With my archers, I'm going to have this option by here, skirmish mode. So if anybody gets near them, they will run away. And I will put them on flame and shot. It tells you what it does. So the base damage is higher from 27 to 31. Base reload time is 30 as well. As a bonus versus cavalry, and the target does lose four morale because fire for 12 seconds. So it's actually pretty good. And then when you're happy, you click start battle. And here we go. So on the right hand side, you can triple speed by pressing this. You can normal speed with play, and you can double speed with this one. You can go slow motion. Everything's in slow motion. Or you can just pause it by either pressing this button or pressing P. You're gonna press P to unpause it. Open tactical maps, you can press tab, or you can press this button up here. It brings up the map again. Just use your cursor to go up and down the screen and WASD to sort of move around. So you can see where the enemy is in this sort of area by here. I can also select all my units by here. I can actually bring them all forward if I wanted to, like this. And it shows you where they're going to. So I'm just going to do that off this menu. I'm going to press R so that they don't run. So R button. When it's on two, it means they're moving fast, they're sprinting. When you press R again, they're only walking. And you can press this button as well. It's all on the buttons by here. I can put them into melee mode, so all my archers go into melee mode if I want to as well. I can halt. And that tells them to stop exactly in their tracks. I can put them into a group, so I can put the AI in control and have my AI to issue an attack for them. I can have the AI group to defend. Um, or I'll just create a selection. I can do that as well if I want to. What I'm going to do though, I'm going to get my cavalry to move up, get my spears to move up as well. Put the slow motion for a moment, I'm just going to get my archers behind just by here. So you can see what they've got. And also if you click on a unit, for example, the Welsh archers, you'll see a green box has come up by here. So my archers are going to be good against their archers, but then not so good against the rest of their troops. My spears are going to be good against anything. They're going to be good against the uh, spears. They're also good against horses. Uh, my cavalry is obviously not going to be good against um, their spears, but they're going to be good against one of their cavalry units and also their archers. And then my generals, it's exactly the same. They're good against cav, but not against anything else. So that's how that basically works. You can actually take these all off. Uh, if I get that off there. 
get that selection off so the AI is not controlling them anymore. This gives you the balance of power and this tells you how much time is left. So remember that um, timer earlier, 60 minutes, and that's what, what we've selected, so that's what we've got up here. And that's the basics of it. There's other stuff like guard modes. If you want your spears not to chase down the enemy, you can put them on, on guard mode. That's quite useful. You can withdraw from all my troops to run away from the battle because you don't think it's worth it and want to fight for another day. There's that as well. Now, a couple of other things as well. Control K takes the HUD off. Well, actually, K, K takes the HUD off. And then, I can't remember what it was. If it's Control J or K. There's a cinematic mode as well. If I escape and find out, I'll get that now. I want to show that in the video. Uh, controls. I've rebanged it for Warhammer, so that's why I can't remember what it was. Um, camera. There's cinematic mode on here. If we can't find it, I will put it on the screen. All of you. Battle. I just want to find the camera controls. We can find it. Cinematic camera. It's actually insert on here. Oh, that's for the. Uh, that's for this one by here. So you can have cinematic cameras. So you can insert. Press insert and get it like this. You can left click to zoom in or out then as well. Um, and you can press delete then, and you have a camera just over the unit like this as well. There is one to get the bars on the screen, like like a machinima type of thing. I will put that on the screen for you guys or in the comment section below because I've rebinded them as I said. And also, if you press space bar, you can choose what you want displayed on here. So if you don't want the path markers on, you can take them off. Uh, if you don't want selection markers on, you can take them off as well. You can hide foliage if you want to. As you can see, it changes things. We'll have it off. Fatigue and bonuses. If you don't want it to be displayed, I'd rather have it displayed. Morale. Play around with this as well. Holding down space bars. What I'm doing. Unit strengths and weaknesses. Quite like that. What class it is. I want to see that because obviously if you're playing a battle quite quickly, you want to see what's going on. The commander's icon. I want to see where my two generals are. And then faction symbols. Up to me if I want them both on or not. Up to you really. Whatever you want to display. So battle share we're gonna start this battle now they're just waiting for us now really so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna select my two spears and i'm gonna move my two spears up to them and i'm gonna get them to walk up my two archers i'm gonna put them in a locked group and i think our archers are gonna be pretty good attacking the welsh archers there we know that our cav's gonna be good against their cav so i'm gonna move my cav to the right flank by here now one-on-one -on -one battle it should be pretty even but i think we should be okay and then finally I've got my general, who's got 48 against theirs, who's got 40. I think we should be able to win that. And hopefully the numbers game will prevail. So I'm going to just speed this up a little bit. We're going to go on to fast forward so our troops get into position. They're going to move about a bit by here now. And now what I think I'll do, I think now I'll double time talking. with my archers here by clicking that button. Get them to move. You also notice this red line shows you where they're going to attack. Show us the I'm going to click on my general and I've double clicked him to charge them. My archers are now firing with flaming shot on their Welsh archers here. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell both of my archers not to be skirmishing. I don't want to run away by here. I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge here. My general's now attacking theirs. I have my spears engage their spears and my cavalry is engaging this. So I hold on spacebar, you can see what's going on here. In melee, combat even. Combat even, 54 against 58. Just about winning that one. Our general's on 43, theirs on 38. Apparently theirs is winning decisively, mine's losing, that's bad. So I'm probably going to be thinking about bringing my general out, even though it looked good to charge them initially. I'm going to turn one of my archers around to actually shoot upon theirs. I'm going to get my general from around the back, away from them. And now I've got my archers firing upon their exposed general there, who's getting some hits on them. I've got one archer pinning down one unit which should be pinned on that one there. I've got this one now taking three shots on there as there. While my general can get out and stay fresh. And my general's gonna actually help out over here. I'm gonna get him to charge. By having two units in on one, I should hope people to break this scout horseman unit. I got two calves against one right here. I also be able to whittle down the general who's now getting involved in a spear fight from here. Probably not a good idea to get your general on spears. That's what's going on there. Both of these they're doing okay, and now they're starting to flee. You can see their general's actually running away, running out to 14. I'll probably break him. My archers still got 80 of them left, doing a good job. These take the spars down here, so blue shows you how much ammunition they have left. Green is obviously good, it means they've got a lot of units left. When it's down to orange, it's you know about 50%, and much red is quite bad. 
My two cavalry units have finished up by here. Uh, those bow archers, they are probably going to cause me problems. The general's dead, that's what this icon is by here, so my archers probably finished them off. I'm going to actually issue my cavalry charge after the Welsh archers here. I'm going to let my archers take the fire, and actually they've killed off all of their units here. So I'm just going to pull both archers up here. I'm going to set my spears up there, and my general, also when I spacebar over here, because he's blue a circle around him that's his aura so anybody within that aura will get a slight morale boost what i'm going to do is going to get him to charge into the back of these see combat's even here but maybe if i just charge into the back as i space far over them that might be enough to break them but charge in and you can see it's starting to flash now being charged in the back is never good and i can also give a rallying boost here for morale and again it gives you a yellow sort of circle put the circle down by here all the units just have a good green arrow pop-up has given them a plus one morale boost for 30 seconds so that's one of his abilities there my cavalry chase them all off by here and what i'm actually going to do i'm going to pull my general out and i'm going to tell my my two archer units just to shoot the spears by here these two are going to pull out i don't want a friendly fire it's going to let the archers shoot away at the spears there's only seven of them left now look there they all are running away getting completely shot at they actually run into their own men with you, and I'm going to let these spears finish these off here. Not a bad battle, we didn't take any major losses. Two of them in the orange, if you can replenish. That's totally fine. If I press the I button as well, it brings up information about the unit as well. So, for example, if I hover over and around, it tells you his armor, his rank. And you can see, if I click on him, it actually pins it to the um, screen by here. You can see he's killed 110 in this battle. He has 48 in, in his unit. But he's only got 26 remaining, which is the same as down here. He's 25 armor, 30 shield, 60 morale. He's 90 speed, melee skills 48, melee damage 36, and his charge bonus is 32. I can click on any unit and it tells you exactly the same thing about them, how many kills they've had and all the info that you need and how much experience they're getting as well. And once the battle's over, it'll say victory or defeat and it'll tell you end battle by here. And you can see, just for the sake of showing you guys some glorious battlefield footage they're getting killed if i press k hold on my cursor got a nice little cinematic thing of men getting shot at by flaming arrows and getting burned as well so you press k to get the ui on and off and once you're happy you press end battle and it says decisive victory you'll say i think it's decisive victory pyrrhic victory if you've won with you know very few men remaining if you're happy you can save the battle if you want to watch it again or end battle once you're happy as well um i think it's decisive victory close victory and pyrrhic victory are the three victories you can get and i think they're the three they've been using on the last three or four total war games now and yeah that's basically what you've done it tells you a breakdown of the battles again continue once you're happy all the information needs on the screen I'm just going to click continue decisive victory and you're left with three options so you can either uh, ransom and release so i get a bit of gold for it i get 80 gold by doing that i can replenish my troops by two percent if i want to or i can just kill the captives i'm gonna actually get some money get another get 80. Moving. my gold has gone back up to a thousand because of that killed him in battle uh, my mission was successful so because of that i've now got plus five public order in all my regions and my unit replenishment's gone up anyway and i've got another one now my heroism's grown up i've got because this i've gone from eight to nine because i won a battle so you can see that modifier has gone up rank up general battles is minus one but settlements is eight so i've gone by one i'm quite happy with that if i click on my general by here now you'll see he's leveled up it gives you a little yellow triangle by here click on it general details and this is his screen by here and this is how you rank up your general so uh, on the left hand side it tells you his character traits and then if you scroll down it's got his military forces traits Tells you the traits he has in regions and provinces. So, for example, he gets plus one to his local province. And it tells you the traits his wife gives him as well. It tells you by here what rank he is. He's got up from a rank one to a rank two because of that battle. He has two for commandment. These give you different abilities like rally, for example. And that goes up and up and up until you get to level 10. You get metal, uh, metal and uh, the ability of rally, play, uh, rally five. 100% bodyguard size for the commander's units. So his, his, many can have and his force goes up. You can have night battles and his morale goes up a hell of a lot as well so there's different traits you can get when you level all these up and his influence also gives him um stuff as well and of course wife by here tells you the traits that she's given him 
and the breakdown of that. These are traits that he has. He has friendly, decisive, shabby, enthusiastic, and then he's got defender. So it depends how you want to max out your general and what sort of general you're going for. So champion gives him plus two to command and it gives his uh, his whole unit plus ten melee skill. It's quite handy. Go for scribe. This is good for a governor. So we can get local province plus eight gold and also two for governance. A bard for zeal. At the moment I've got one zeal. His commander's aura has gone up, his, his morale's gone up. Maybe go for bard. Forager is good for replenishment and food production. Pillager for raiding. Quartermass is good for your campaign map movement range. Priest for your loyalty and then siege engineer for obviously your battles. So there's certain things you want to go for. I'm thinking probably you're going to go for quartermaster. And then you can see plus 10. If you want to change that though, before you've clicked uh, the accept changes, you can click reset skill points and go for something else. But we're going to go for quartermaster for the sake of this. And we're going to click Awaiting accept. Orders. Now this is what I mean about food production. You can see by here... I took some losses, so the little green button by here, or green plus rather, on all of these men shows you how much they're getting replenished. So for example, this spear unit, they're getting 14 men each turn replenished. It's going to take me six turns to replenish this unit fully. If I put this whole army though, back into the province, I right click that, and you can see that's gone up by a lot more. So now, it's only going to take four turns to fully replenish this unit. If you're garrisoned, you replenish more than if you're out in the field. And obviously, if you're in conditions that are like a foreign land, for example, or if you're out at sea, you're going to suffer attrition, so that won't go up, it'll actually go down. So these are things you have to consider. And that pretty much sums up most of the basics to this game. There are other things as well, which I will do in a follow-up video if you guys want me to. You can also rename your armies as well. So for this, I'm going to call it... The Grand Tutorial Army, as opposed to the Great Heathen Army. So that's what we're going to be called, the Grand Tutorial Army there. And it tells you also as well the gold upkeep of this army, and then also how much food it costs me. So it costs me 60 food to keep this army going, and I've only got sort of plus 30 at the moment. Um, and yeah, once you're happy with how everything has gone, you click End Turn by here. And that's me taking you through your very first turn in a Total War Saga, Thrones of Britannia. You have all the factions that it goes through on the top of the screen by here until it gets to yours. Loading times do depend on quite a few things, how many factions are left, how much of the campaign you're actually viewing. You can change that by settings for AI turn, etc. And also your hardware, whether you're using an SSD or um, you know just regular hard drive and that sort of thing. And yeah, that's pretty much the basics of this game if you have enjoyed this video i'd appreciate it if you drop a like on the video if you need any help with anything further then by all means drop a comment and i will reply as quickly as i can i do work a full-time job so i don't always reply on the day but i do tend to reply within two or three days of the comments so i'll get back to you as quickly as i can and by all means if anybody in the comment section is an, is an experienced total War player themselves and is, are able to help anybody then i'd appreciate that immensely as well i've been dragon heart the prince of wales thank you for watching until next time Goodbye.